I'm always asking what's missing and always reaching out to different parts of the community to figure that out. Hi. There isn't a lot of representation. Get as many different, you know, um, perspectives involved as possible. We're painting the generation. And puzzle pieces. So I'm Miri Villiard. My job as an artist was to kind of collectively take all the input that we got and put it into singular designs. Oh geez, that is a huge camera. I included some sturgeon, which uh, kind of have a lot of cultural significance uh, for the Anishinaabe people who still exist here, you know. It's kind of a reference to just giant things, giant human creations on the water, giant, um, you know, spiritual creations in the water, just different things like that. Public art is so visible. And so people were seeing the process of, you know, involving people of all ages and making art for neighborhoods and had a lot of positive sort of feedback towards that. I'd gotten the, the Forecast Public Arts Grant um, as an emerging artist for the crosswalk murals that I did this summer. And that was sort of, that was a huge launching point for me this year, I feel, because I'm not technically a public artist. <laughs> I just one day wanted to do a really colorful person and it became what I did for a few years and what I became sort of known for and the style is super popular. I call it color blocking so I get like the initial colors underneath and then I start blending it once it's all, once I know where all the colors are going to be. Growing up as a kid, and I'm undoubtedly like Ojibwe, and then my dad, who was the, en the enrolled person in our family, left, but we still lived on the reservation. Um, and then we became like exceptionally poor, you know, and so I just learned to be whatever being poor meant at the time. It was just all these things that kept me kind of away from the world for a while. I had these National Geographic magazines that we dumpster dived at the end of the year because my art teacher was really cool and, and I used those to just practice drawing because I wanted to get good at portraits and, you know, seeing people. Ran into a guy named Rocky Makes Room for them, and he was like, do you want to do a show with me? It would be cool. He hadn't even seen any of my work, you know? <laughs> and uh, I said, yeah, totally, because I was like, this is my big break. I'm going to get a show in the big city of Duluth. It surrounded me with people, and I hadn't had that before. And just good, good things seemed to happen when people and art came together, and more opportunities always built up after that. This is just like the coolest, <laughs> coolest use of a pictograph ever. There were leftover funds from Zeitgeist for um, the project I'd done last year, which was the big fish in Canal Park. And that's how the Chief Buffalo project kind of started. They were like, would you like to do, you know, some painting in this space and work with the Indigenous Commission? Then I was like, I want to do Chief Buffalo stuff. Our clan system is going to be up on the back wall and there'll be like threads between their hearts and their minds to say that they came to kind of like a consensus, consensus on a decision and all those threads lead to the crane and then the, there's a thread that leads out I think from the eye of the crane and so Chief Buffalo would be like the actual person connected to the pictograph when he went to the, the president with his messages. So I don't know if I should do his whole shelf. What do you think? One yellow, one red, like fire colors? My name is Michelle Defoe. Uh, my Ojibwe name is Wabanungagokwe, and I'm helping Miri with this art project. And these are all different stories, like we have stories about mermaids, and so we included that because, like, the lake is right there, and um, it's cool to see our Anishinaabe stories of what we see in the lake and what we understand lives in the lake. And so we have a lot of stories about, like, the sturgeon down there, she's including that, and the mermaid. Um, turtles, we have a lot of turtle stories. I wanted these to be like sort of motion, so like when we outline it in black, that'll It'll be that diversity of indigenous, you know, styles and perspectives and stories and experiences. 
and I'm hoping to incorporate as many other indigenous identifying artists as I can in that process. It doubles as fins or movement. I just like yeah. having like a little like flow in the direction of where they're swimming. Okay. I just suddenly have a space where there's just you're just overwhelmed with tons of different perspectives and stories. It's just going to be really cool and I'm excited to to kind of facilitate that happening. It's kind of like we coexist together. So we have our non-Indigenous stories weaved in with our Indigenous stories and it's kind of like they're all with each other. So I like that message. I'm white and native, you know, and being able to come to terms with just embracing both of those things. Because I'm only like, I'm one segment of Indigenous perspective. I'm not a representative of the whole experience, and nobody is. Today, I feel like <laughs> success is balanced, but maybe next week I'll think something differently. There's such a scarcity mindset, I feel, that people are just like, if we do this, then we can't do this. I'm like, no, you can do both things with art. You can do anything with art.